Sisters, today we welcome in our parish, Our Lady of Częstochowa, in Sterling Heights and the suburbs of Detroit, Bishop Gerard Buttersby. He is for the first time in our parish, so welcome in our parish. <laughs> you came here to confirm our young parishioners and also we ask you to pray for them, for their future. Dear Bishop Gerard, on behalf of the people of Our Lady of Częstochowa, we welcome you and thank you for coming to our parish to celebrate the confirmation of our children. Most of them were baptized at this very church years ago. Ever since, we tried to lead them by example and raise them not only to be God-loving Catholics, by having high moral standards and incorporating them in their everyday life, but also to take pride in their Polish-American heritage in which the Catholic faith plays such an important role. It is our hope that with the presence of the Holy Spirit, they will continue to find strength and guidance through the faith that was instilled in them as they mature and are faced with difficult choices. We ask for your blessings and prayers for these young men and women, as they are the future of our parish and our faith. As we prepare to enter these sacred mysteries, we are called, reminded that we are called to this place by the Holy Spirit, that we might be knit together as one people, to worship our Father in spirit and in truth, to be caught up in the Paschal mystery, to offer our lives in this holy and perfect sacrifice. We come here today, too, to confirm these young men and women that they might receive the graces and be equipped with the graces that they will need to participate and assist Jesus in his mission. And so we take a moment as we prepare, and we ask God's pardon and peace, that we might more worthily receive our God, that we might more worthily celebrate these mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Czytanie z dziejów apostolskich. Kiedy nadszedł dzień Pięściesiątnicy, znajdowali się wszyscy razem na tym samym miejscu. Nagle spadł z nieba szum, jakby uderzenie gwałtownego wiatru i napełnił cały dom, w którym przebywali. 
ukazały się im też języki jakby z ognia, które się rozdzieliły i na każdym z nich spoczął jeden. I wszyscy zostali napełnieni Duchem Świętym i zaczęli mówić obcymi językami, tak jak im Duch pozwala mówić. Przebywali wtedy w Jerozolimie, pobożni Żydzi ze wszystkich narodów pod słońcem. Kiedy więc powstał ów szum, zbiegli się tłumnie i zdumieli, bo każdy słyszał, jak przemawiali w, w jego własnym języku. Pełni zdumienia i podziwu mówili, czy ci wszyscy, którzy przemawiają, nie są Galilejczykami? Jak sześć, więc każdy z nas słyszy swój własny język ojczysty? Partowie i Medowie i Elamici i mieszkańcy Mesopotami, Judei oraz Kapadocji, Pontu i Azji, Frygi oraz Pamfilii, Egiptu i tych części Libii, które leżą blisko Cyreny, i przybysze z Rzymu, Żydzi oraz Prożelici, Kretańczycy i Arabowie. Słyszymy ich głoszących w naszych językach wielkie dzieła Boże. Oto słowo Boże.
gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bishop Gerard, I am pleased to present to you the candidates from Our Lady of Częstochowa Parish. Father Andrew, they have been prepared. Have they been prepared, and are they ready to receive this sacrament? These candidates have prepared for confirmation by participating in the sacramental life of the church and by attending religion classes. Now they ask to be confirmed and after consultation with their teachers and parents, I testify that they are ready. My dear candidates, your pastor has testified on your behalf. Are you, now, are you ready now to receive the sacrament of confirmation? I am. I'm so very pleased to be here at Our Lady of Chesnova with you for this confirmation. As a bishop, it's my favorite thing to do, to confirm young men and women in the faith, to confirm them with Christ's spirit. It's a powerful moment, one for which your families, for which you, for which your pastor and pastoral leaders have been looking forward to. For me, I've been praying for you, asking that you might have a docile heart to receive the Lord. That you might have a heart that is open, that the Lord who knocks might enter in, and he and his Father reign in you. I was thinking about that as I drove over tonight or this afternoon from the west side. It's a bit of a time that gives you a moment to pray the rosary and, and meditate. And I was thinking about the fact that there's someone here who's even more excited than your parents or you or even Father Andrew. There's someone here more excited than I about this moment. There's someone here who has been aching for this moment for millennia upon millennia upon millennia. Someone who knew before Poland became a Christian country back in the 10th century. Someone who wants to draw you to himself and press you to his breast and whisper in your ear and say this very day, I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you that I might give you my spirit, that I might give you the spirit of Christ that you might share with me in the Father's plan. Of course, I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus, whom God so loved the world 
that his Father sent to us on a pilgrimage of love. That we who were far, far off might be brought close. St. Paul puts it this way, that it is the Father's plan to reestablish all creation in Christ. To reestablish even the cosmos. To reestablish you this very day and me. To reestablish us in Christ. To share in his mission of love. To share in the revelation of God's love in his son Jesus. That you and I might allow his love to flow through us into the world. You see, that's what's going to happen today. Sometimes people say that confirmation is when you became, become an adult Christian. And that's a very lovely little bit of fiction. An adult Christian is John Paul II. An adult Christian is St. Faustina. An adult Christian is one like our Blessed Lady who has been fully cooperative with the graces of the Holy Spirit. You and I, my beloved brothers and sisters, in many ways are still on soft food. We're not yet adult Christians. We're learning the ropes of allowing the Risen One to flow through us into the world. There's so much I'd like to talk to you about today. And I'd like that you hang on every word and remember everything I'm about to say. But in 25 years of priesthood, that hasn't happened, so I don't think that's going to happen today. But there are three things I want you to remember. And I want you to build your life of discipleship. And I want you never to stray from these foundational truths. And the first of these is a truth that changed the lives of the apostles. And it's meant to change your life too. The truth is, is that they encountered the risen Christ. And it changed them. They went from fear and hiding to faith and proclamation. They went from timidity to boldness. Peter was no longer afraid to be known as Jesus' friends. And neither must you be. You see, there's one incontrovertible fact, and the first historical proof of that fact is the change of heart that appeared among the apostles. And that's simply this. Jesus is risen. Amen? Jesus is risen and it changed everything for the apostles. And encountering the risen Christ, it changed Thomas from doubt to proclamation where he said simply, my Lord and my God. That was his response. And it was what sustained them and compelled them, impelled them out into the streets and out into other worlds, other nations. It is what must compel you. In this day you shall receive and encounter the risen Christ. Indeed, with every Eucharist, we encounter the risen Christ. The second thing that you must know is because of the fact that Jesus is alive and he reigns, that he's revealed to us not as a lovely philosopher, a good guy, a preacher, 
but he's revealed to us as Messiah and Lord. Amen? And belief in this truth that he is Messiah and Lord, pressing into this truth with our flesh and blood, brings life and brings us to new life. That's what belief means. Sometimes people think it's an intellectual exercise. I believe in God. Never forget Satan believes in God. It's no credit to him. To believe in God for a Christian is to press into the truth that Jesus is Lord with our own body and blood. By changing the way we live and allowing ourselves to be conformed by Christ's Spirit into other Christs. For a Christian, belief and the opposite of it is, un is disobedience. It's not unbelief. You see, Jesus is risen and He and Lord is Lord and Messiah. And that changes everything. And finally, the truth is that he is risen and Lord and Messiah, and we are his witnesses. Amen? Amen? And this truth, my brothers and sisters, must guide our lives. What does it mean if we simply confess Jesus with our lips, and then we go out the door and deny him with our lives? Will that convince anybody that we believe that? Will it change any hearts? Will anybody be attracted to that? Such hypocrisy does not change hearts, does not evangelize. And you know and I know that bishops can be hypocritical, even priests, and even lay men and women. Such hypocrisy is unbelievable to an unbelieving world. And it has to be different for you. We have all the hypocrites we need. What we need are friends of Jesus. What we need are witnesses who believe in the truth that Jesus is Lord. That he is love and he invites us to a new way of living and a new way of loving. Your dignity, my brothers and sisters, is to participate, not only in the identity, but in the mission of Christ. Our dignity is to be caught up in the mystery of Christ, to worship our Father in spirit and in truth, to share in his priestly mission, to allow ourselves to be made other Christ. And that's the mission. And we can't do it on our own. We need Jesus for this. We need His Spirit. And so we must become people of prayer. We must become people who base our whole week upon the Eucharist, upon the Holy Mass, and allow ourselves to become the mystery we receive. You know, my brothers and sisters, we are going to be given a gift in a very few moments. The gift of the Holy Spirit. And you won't feel it. It won't knock you over. It's a supernatural gift. What will it, it will enable you to do, though, is to resist the evil one. To resist the lure of the world. To resist the lure of the flesh. So that you can, who, you who are a temple of the Holy Spirit, can allow him to flow through you to transform the world. God bless you, my brothers and sisters, and thank you for having the courage to stand with Jesus. To share with him his mission, his pilgrimage of love. About 13 years ago, someone answered these questions on your behalf. And so I ask you today, 
The responses I do to these questions, the responses like the question that a, bro a groom gives to her bride, or a bride to her groom, it is the question that I desire, that all of us desire to ask for that great union between the bridegroom Jesus and his church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? I do. do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. And we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life and baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Thank you. 
Then let us stand together and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father, through Christ our Lord and Brother. For the Holy Church of God, together with Francis our Pope, Alan our Bishop, Bishop Gerard, and all the bishops that, gathered by the Holy Spirit, the Church may grow in increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For these his servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed that, planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and sponsors, that by word and example, they may continue to encourage those who they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that all people who have one maker and father may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters, without discrimination of race or nation, and with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we are your sons and daughters and have been made so by the blood of the Lamb. Hear these prayers and the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We ask you, Father, to cast out all rebellion in our hearts, all hypocrisy. We ask that you give us a greater share in the supernatural gifts of faith, hope, and love. And we ask this, Father, with confidence, for you are our Father. And we have been made your sons and daughters in Jesus' holy name.
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
me with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome they may gladden your church by their holiness, and through their works and their charity foster her growth in the world through Christ our Lord. Now bless the crosses that our young people are wearing. That, you know, the cross is what we follow. It's the symbol by which we are saved. And it is the sign of our fellowship with Christ and all his saints. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to us because you love us and want to save us. By the power of his cross, free us from sin and let us live each day for you. Bless this sign of glory and let it remind us that Jesus died and rose for all. Help us to carry our cross with him every day and to follow him in serving others. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Bracie i siostry, dobiega końca nasza piękna uroczystość wierzowania. Cała parafia, drodzy młodzi, wspiera was i modli się za wami, byście w przyszłości wyrośli na dojrzałych katolików, byście potrafili świadczyć o Bogu. Bishop Battersby, thank you for coming to our parish to confirm our young parishioners. The entire parish support you and your families, dear young people. Supports you with prayers on the occasion of receiving the sacrament of confirmation. We thank your parents and also Father Adam Swominski for preparing you for confirmation. In your later life, and you will have to choose between good and evil, always ask the Holy Spirit for light, for wisdom, and good decision in your life. May the Holy Spirit help you to testify that Jesus is the Lord of heaven and earth. Defend your faith, because Jesus did not lie. Love God and other people, even to the point of giving you life. May God bless you. W waszym dalszym życiu, droga młodzieży, będziecie musieli wybierać pomiędzy dobrym a złem. Zawsze, zawsze proście Ducha Świętego Światu o mądrość i o dobre decyzje w waszym życiu. Niech Duch Święty pomaga wam świadczyć, że Jezus jest Panem nieba i ziemi. Brońcie waszej wiary, bo Jezus nie kłamie. Nie ucie Boga i drugiego człowieka nawet aż do dodania życia. Szczęść Wam Boże. Duchu Święty, który napełniłeś serca swoich wiernych i rozpaliłeś w nich ogień Twojej miłości, bądź uwielbiony za Twoje dary. W sakramencie wierzchowania otrzymaliśmy Twoją moc i staliśmy się świadkami Chrystusa, tak jak apostołowie. Spraw, abyśmy potrafili mężnie wyznawać naszą przypadastość do Kościoła Chrystusowego i rzecz według zasad naszej wiary. We thank you, Bishop Jer. Today's ceremony is about to end, but we still have our entire soon-to-be adult lives ahead of us. We wish to express our gratitude and thank you for your apostolic ministry through which we have received strengthening in the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your prayer, for sowing the seeds of God's words into our hearts for the Eucharist you offer to God on our behalf, 
and conferring the sacrament of confirmation on us. God bless you. Dziękujemy naszym rodzicom za ich troskę o naszą przyszłość i dbanie o rozwój w naszych sercach chrześcijańskiego życia. Za wszelkie dobro i miłość, jaką stale nas otaczają. Dziękujemy świadkom wierzmowania za wspólną modlitwę oraz za obecność przy, przy nas w tej tak ważnej chwili naszego życia. Naszą wdzięczność wyrażamy ciężom siostrom i katechetom, którzy przygotowywali nas do sakramentu wierzmowania. Nie zapominamy też o naszych nauczycielach i wychowawcach ze szkoły polskiej, którzy już od lat starają się nam ukazywać jak najlepszą drogę do dojrzałego człowieczeństwa. Wszystkim, którzy otaczają nas swoją modlitwą i życzliwością, niech dobry Bóg będzie nagrodą. Bóg zapłać. Drogi Księża Adamie, w imieniu wszystkich rodziców zgromadzonych, chcemy Ci najmocniej podziękować za to nam przygotowanie naszej młodzieży do doj sakramentu dojrzałości chrześcijańskiej. Um, chcieliśmy też szczególnie podziękować za Twoje autentyczne zaangażowanie już od pierwszej lekcji, za taką spontaniczną otwartość i za poruszanie wielu trudnych tematów w czasie tej lekcji które, jak myślę, przygotowały naszą młodzież do tego, aby być e, świadomymi, dojrzałymi katolikami. E, I za coś jeszcze jednego, takiego niezwykłego, myślę, e, za to, że ksiądz w czasie tego przygotowania młodzieży stworzył taki klimat spotkania z nimi. I myślę, że każdy z nich czuje się jakoś szczególnie zauważony, zaakceptowany, lubiany, a to doświadczenie zostanie w ich sercach do końca życia. Bardzo dziękuję. Ja jeszcze e, chciałam <śmiech> bardzo krótko. E, również dziękujemy e, Pani Justynce za wybór pieśni, za przygotowanie ich, za pomoc nam e, w tych próbach, które mieliśmy tutaj, za przygotowanie zespołu. Jak zwykle świetna oprawa muzyczna. Dziękujemy bardzo. Za niezłomne trwanie przy każdej ważnej uroczystości naszych dzieci. Dziękujemy Panu Józefowi Rodzińskiemu za nagranie wszystkiego i uwiecznienie. Before I offer my final blessing, I would just like to thank the parents. And that usually and often includes grandparents and aunts and uncles and older siblings. We're here because of your faith. We're here because you nurtured love for Jesus in your home. And I want you to know that Jesus is very proud of you. And I want you to know that your children should always, as a sign of discipleship, honor you and bless, you, bless God for your loving care. Thank you. <laughs> Secondly, when uh, the Holy Spirit shines his light on a priest's people, it swells his heart. It's why he became a priest. It's why Christ called him to <coughs> follow in his ministry. And so I'd just like to thank you, Father Andrew, and your brother priests for their shepherding of this community, for being a good shepherd. And the newly confirmed, I want to thank you 
for having the courage to stand up and be counted as one of Jesus' friends for life. It takes a lot of courage in a day, an age when people are running and chasing after false gods, and you choose to follow love. And so I want to thank you. Make sure you allow yourselves to be caught up every day in the mystery of Christ. Make sure every Sunday you come to Mass. So sometimes young people say to me, I don't go to Mass because it's boring. Sometimes older people say that too. But I want you to know something. You don't come here for entertainment. That you go to Comerica Park for. Here you come to worship, to lay down your life, to receive the Lord in word and sacrament, to become set apart for your Father's plan. So make sure you never miss Mass. You know what you call a Catholic who doesn't go to church on Sunday? The vulnerable. Vulnerable to the wiles of the enemy, vulnerable to the world and the flesh. So get to Mass, become a person of prayer, and allow the love of Christ to flow through you into the world. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Bow your hands and pray for God's blessing. May God the Father Almighty bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit. And may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. May his only begotten Son who promised that the Spirit of Truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. May the Holy Spirit who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen. Amen.